What's going on peeps, Mastermind here. So today's video is gonna be talking about the PlayStation 4 Pro, formerly known as the PlayStation Neo. We're also gonna talk about the uh, Xbox One Scorpio and uh, the Nintendo NX. Uh, I have a lot of things I wanna talk about, so let's get started. But before I do, the gameplay you're looking at here is actually on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and it is none other than gameplay of the new Mass Effect, Mass Effect Andromeda. I can't wait for it, really hyped from the gameplay that they showed. Uh, I wish they would have shown more, but uh, I can't wait. So anyway, moving on. So I've been saying this now for a couple of years. You could even go back on my channel uh, earlier, I think sometime last year, and I was specifically talking about what I thought the future of console gaming was gonna be. A lot of people keep saying, oh, console gaming is gonna die, it's all about the PC. No, if PCs are allowed to upgrade incrementally, so are the consoles. I've been saying that this is gonna happen, and this is obviously where we are headed. For the exception of Nintendo, uh, they're doing a whole different thing as far as their consoles are concerned. But um, the PlayStation 4 Pro, let me start off by saying this is supposed to be, um, I would say for their VR, but right now they're marketing it as a 4K system, a 4K version of the PlayStation 4. And um, I think uh, that's probably the right move and the smart move because I think within the next year or two, we're gonna see uh, huge reductions uh, as far as costs are concerned for uh, 4K television. So I think the natural progression for consoles is to be able to display uh, games in 4K. Also, I don't think that there's gonna be a high demand for VR gaming, so it would make sense if they're gonna invest in a system like this to be able to do VR gaming that it's able to do other things. Now, does that mean that every game on the PlayStation 4 Pro or the Scorpio is really gonna be a full 4K? Probably not, but the closer that they can get to PCs and the closer that they can get to realizing you know, what we're seeing as far as uh, new technology is concerned uh, and keep it affordable, I think is a smart thing. Now, a lot of people are criticizing Sony because they feel that the PlayStation 4 Pro is underpowered and obviously it's not gonna be as powerful as the Xbox Scorpio, which we've kind of known now for a little while, but now that uh, there's a release date for this, and it's pretty much confirmed that it's just not gonna be as powerful. Also, Microsoft has quite a bit of time for them to make sure that they have the more powerful console on the market. Is this gonna be a huge big deal? I don't think it's gonna be that big of a huge deal. I think it, it will help Microsoft obviously uh, sell units, but we gotta think about it. Sony does have one advantage in the sense that they are coming out with this first. Microsoft, we're not gonna see this from Microsoft till sometime next year. And uh, is it gonna be that more significantly better or more powerful than what the PlayStation 4 Pro is gonna deliver? So, uh, you know, those are things that we're not gonna know for a while. So uh, Sony does have that one advantage first, ha have it out on the market first. Uh, but Microsoft will have bragging rights as far as which one, which company has a more powerful hardware. We all say all the time graphics don't make a game, but that's nonsense because everybody uh, likes graphics. They want their graphics nice. Uh, if that was the case, we didn't care about graphics, we'd also be playing the uh, Intellivision or Atari 2600. But uh, moving on, the one criticism I'm gonna say that I have to throw at Sony is that the fact that the PlayStation 4 Pro will not have a 4K Blu-ray player. That boggles my mind, considering that the Xbox One S, not even the major upgrade that Microsoft is bringing out, does have a 4K Blu-ray player. I would imagine Sony did this to keep the cost down. That's gonna be another advantage that they may have over Microsoft is that they're gonna have a better pricing point. But we're not really gonna know for sure, or at least until uh, Microsoft announces something uh, as far as uh, how much it's gonna cost. But I'm probably not anticipating to hear anything from Microsoft regarding that for quite some time. But here's the problem. So you, let's say you decide, I'm gonna go ahead and get a 4K TV because I'm gonna get myself ready for the PlayStation Pro or the Xbox uh, Scorpio or you know whatever you just you're ready to, to move forward so one of the incentives for you getting a 4k TV is so you can watch movies and some of your television programming that's available in 4k Netflix is already providing some of this some of the other streaming services also have that as well YouTube being one of them so here you are 
you get a 4K TV, but guess what? Those apps are already built into your 4K TV. You don't need a PlayStation or an Xbox to stream Netflix or YouTube or whatever it is. So the fact that the PlayStation Pro is gonna allow you to already do something your TV can do on its own, then what's the real incentive? Is it the games? If it's just the games, then you're fine. But even then, not all the games are gonna be in true 4K. So you want a 4K Blu-ray player. That would be the natural progression to getting a uh, 4K TV, is to have a 4K Blu-ray player. Uh, well, it doesn't come with one. And the Xbox One S, which isn't the uh, big upgrade Microsoft is doing, already has that built in. Right now, you can go ahead and pick up an Xbox One S, way less powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro, and it's gonna already allow you to have a 4K Blu-ray player and at a pretty good cost because you get a console with that and all the things that the Xbox One can do and you also get a fairly decent 4K Blu-ray player. This is gonna be a huge problem for Sony when it comes to how Microsoft is going to probably try to separate themselves from Sony. When you ask the question, whenever there's a, a competition going on between two different companies, you wanna ask the question, what is it that one company does better than the other? and you go down your pros and cons. Well, if uh, the Xbox One S and presumably the uh, Scorpio are gonna have the 4K Blu-ray built in, then that's one huge advantage that they already have over Sony. Uh, not to mention that if the Scorpio is more powerful, which we already know it is, that's another advantage. And then third uh, would be most of the games that you see on the PlayStation 4 are on the Xbox One. So then again, it really comes down to now is Uncharted and uh, you know Sony's uh, IPs, uh, are, are those that important to you that you would rather go with the Sony machine or do you want uh, a machine that's gonna deliver more? It's the same question that you kind of ask when you're comparing the Xbox One to the PlayStation 4 is, hey, PlayStation 4 is more powerful, most of the same games on there, and the question you would ask yourself is, do I really love Halo? Do I really love, you know, Xbox games, you know, Killer Instinct and, you know, things like that. So these are the questions that consumers are going to have to ask themselves when they're presented with which one do I buy? Sony, like I said, has the advantage because they're out first. Now, Sony and Microsoft, it's gonna be a war back and forth. I love it. I'm intending on getting the uh, Scorpio. Not too sure if I'm gonna get the uh, PlayStation 4 Pro right away. I'm sure eventually I will get it. But I do think that these systems are gonna keep upgrading. So expect to see this happen again in another maybe three or four years. So the next question is, where does this leave Nintendo? Well, I think it leaves Nintendo in the dust, to be honest with you. What's gonna happen is that the NX is gonna come out. It's gonna be vastly underpowered. And the fact that Sony has been able to already bring out the console, we already know what it looks like, the PlayStation 4 Pro, and uh, we already have a release date and a pricing point for it. That means that when Nintendo releases the information on the system and finally shows it off, if it's underpowered compared to the uh, even regular PlayStation 4, who's gonna be interested in that? Obviously, hardcore Nintendo fans are gonna jump to it, but if the third parties aren't there, we're gonna see another Wii U guaranteed because I don't think the gimmick is going to get a lot of people running to Nintendo this time. Uh, the Wii U struggled mightily. It wasn't just the messaging, gamers are smart. I'm not talking about all the casuals out there, but normal gamers are pretty smart. We know what's good, we know what a good product is, and if um, you know the Wii U, uh, you know, didn't do so well, uh, you know, it's it's because the consumers knew what to expect, and uh, you got to get your hardcore audience in there first. The casuals will follow if you build a great library and you're able to get your system at a good pricing point which Nintendo usually is able to do as far as first party support and as far as uh, pricing is concerned. But, uh, and that might be their ace in a hole. Uh, they're doing a cartridge thing from what the rumors indicate. So I don't know. I just think that as far as what the future of gaming uh, holds for home consoles, I think Sony and Microsoft are gonna be competing and I think Nintendo will be left behind. Unless they capture a huge portion of the mobile market which is what I think they're planning on doing, but they have stiff competition with uh, Apple and Android, so I don't know how well that's gonna work for them. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. Those are my thoughts. If you got something to say, leave a comment down below, and of course, 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you once again for watching. Mastermind out.